uh, just some information that you need to know. Maximizing Impact, the one year later celebration is next week. We're so excited. We've got some, some uh, testimonies, some stories of how Jesus have, has impacted some people over the last year. And I can't wait to, to, for next week to hear those stories. Uh, Ambria, there's a few hands right back here. And, uh, but it's, it's going to be exciting. We also have a couple baptisms that we're going to be doing. I, I just can't wait for next week. So bring a friend. Let them know that, that, that Jesus is the most important thing. And uh, we're going to just hear some amazing stories next week. I can't wait. Also next week after the service, we're going to have a growth group leader uh, training. So if you're interested in leading a growth group, that would be a good meeting to show up for. Even if you're not ready like next week or a month from now, if you want to consider like maybe even a year from now leading a growth group, if, if you're a part, if you lead a class here at uh, Heartland Community, we would love for you to be a part of that just to get a little bit more uh, information and, and things like that. And we want to build you up as leaders. So if you, you know, lead a class for kids, if you lead a class for, for youth, if you lead a class for adults, this will be beneficial for you to, to, to come. So, so please be here uh, following the service next week. And uh, we do need numbers because we will provide food for you. So please let me or Chris Ernie know. Uh, so Chris, can, where, where are you? Oh, wait, you're over there. You're not in your regular place. You threw me off, uh, which is all right. So uh, let Chris or I, I know about that. Also, the growth group uh, that we're going to be starting in two weeks from today is called Fault Lines, and there is a book to go along with that, and we're going to be showing a video during uh, the offering about that group, so if you're interested, you can purchase a book for about $10, and the, the sign-ups are back there with, with the This Is Us painting, and uh, please uh, sign up so we can get those orders in. With that, I'd ask the ushers to please come forward and we'll take our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, so thankful for who you are. You are gracious, you are mighty, and we are just so thankful of, of, of the things that you've done in our lives, the things that you, you, you've uh, touched us in amazing ways. And, and you've grown us, you've, you've shown us grace, you've shown us mercy, and we want to be able to give back to you so other people can know about that mercy, other people can know about that grace. So, Lord, we love you, we praise you in your name, amen. If you are a first-time guest with us, in your, right in front of you, some, underneath at least one of the three seats, can, kind of, that you can reach, is a brown... Uh, card. We'd love for you to be able to fill that out and take it to uh, the Connect Center right after and, and give it to Deb there. We'd love to be able to trade that card for, for uh, uh, Chick-fil-A or Starbucks gift card. Uh, just as our word of thanks to you for filling that out, we'd love to be able to also connect with you so we can know how we can serve you better. So if, if you're a first-time guest, welcome. We love you. Please stay. Please come back next week. Um, we've been in a series called The Voice over the last few weeks, and this is the last week of The Voice. And any time I, I do a series, I try to wrap it all up, but you might not have been here for all the weeks, so I want to kind of cover what each week is. And, and I've tried to figure out how, how, how can I best sum up each week in a sentence. And it really is all about choices, the choices that we make because the world that we live in is a little bit chaotic, a little bit loud, and we're going from one thing to the next. We're just busy all the time. It's hard to slow down, right? It's, it's hard to even hear ourselves think rather than even taking time to listen to God and what He thinks, right? It can be difficult. So, so over the last few weeks, we, we looked at a few different choices, a few different choices of what we can do to quiet our worlds around us. The first one is to choose life. 
over death, right? There's, there's a lot of choices that we can make that will add life or add death to our lives, right? Prosperity and blessings over destruction and curses, you know, the people that we hang out with, uh, the, the, the things that we allow in our lives bring either death or life. And, 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 and it's amazing how people can add to our life or take away from it. Deuteronomy 30, 19 was kind of the main verse that we used that week. And it said, Choose life so that your children may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him. This is an interesting verse because it touches on so many things that I love about it. But it's not just about how it impacts you, but it impacts your children and the people around you. Your life of choosing God impacts the people around you and it actually helps you to listen to his voice and hold on to him week two we talked about choosing trust and, and trusting god's voice over man's right it is easy easy to when we have a problem to go complain to somebody else right and, and, and hear what they have to say and that's not a bad thing but we still need to remember who's the voices that we are listening to most who are the ones that we put in our head, that, that the, the ones that we think when, when, when we're struggling? Who are the voices that we remember? Who are the voices that are pouring into our lives and actually add wealth to it? You know, Psalm 46, 10 was the verse for that week. Be still and know that I'm God because he cares. He, he, he wants the best for you. Week 3. Pastor Bill came from Cedar Rapids. Maybe you were here that week. And, and, and he talked about some amazing stuff. I, I listened to the sermon. If you, if you weren't here that week, you should go to uh, YouTube and uh, uh, search Heartland LPC and, and listen to that message. It was a great one. But he talked about submitting to God over, or, or even over your own opinion because we have opinions about things. But, but we need to learn to God's opinion because his opinion is what matters, right? He, he created us. He knows everything about us. And a couple weeks ago, we talked about choosing listening over speaking because people are worth being listened to, right? People need to know that you care for them. We talked about empathy. We talked about humility. We talked about patience. Those are the type of things that, that, that we need to be for the people that, 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 that need us, right? Like, because we are the church. We are the hope of the world. And we talked about James 1.19 being quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Those are the types of things that people need in this world, right? Because listening, listening is, is, is one of the hardest things to do. And so many people have so many opinions about different things. We need to just learn to listen and care about other people's opinions. Not to hold them over God's opinions, but we need to let them know that their opinion is valid and we want to love them. Today we're going to be in John 10, 1 through 21. So please turn your Bibles there. If you don't have a Bible, we'll have the words on the screen for you. Uh, I'm going to read verses 1 through 21 to you. Uh, so just listen. Listen to what Jesus had to say in this passage. John 10, 1 through 21. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the sheep shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never know a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was trying to tell them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. 
He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are, all, are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. At these words, the Jews were again divided. Many of them said, He is demon-possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, These are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Let us pray. Lord, open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to what you have to say. If I'm the only one that speaks today, uh, I failed. Work in our lives, work in our hearts, and speak to us. Show us how to live, because we need it. We praise you in your name. Amen. You know, it's, it's hard to think that a passage about a sheep and a shepherd would be so controversial. But this was a very controversial lesson that Jesus was teaching. He was talking to the Pharisees. And what he said was a big deal. It was a big deal. Even though some of the people that heard it, you know, you, you read that right in the first paragraph, that... that they didn't even understand what he was trying to say. Some people, however, knew exactly what he was trying to say. And those people that knew were getting really frustrated and mad because what he was trying to say was trying to change how they did church, how they did life, how they lived. Now, sometimes people don't like hearing the truth, right? It's hard to hear the truth sometimes. I've been told the truth sometimes, and it's like, oh, you punched me in the gut. Like, even though it, was, it wasn't a punch, it was just some words of, of truth and wisdom, something that I needed to hear. Have you ever felt like that before? Have you ever had that experience? One of the first things that he said that people had some, some, some questioning about that they didn't like was when Jesus said, I am the gate, whoever enters through me will be saved, right? This is a big deal because only God can save, right? But for a lot of these people, the Pharisees specifically, teachers of the law, who are trying to, to teach all these Jewish people about who God is and, and what he does, here's a guy who is saying, no, I'm the one that saves, right? Like, this is a big deal. And, and he's trying to say, hey, it's about me, not not, not about these people trying to tell you who God is. I am God. And they didn't like it because they thought he was just a man, a, a, another prophet. But he was a lot more than that. And so, so basically, it was the issue of salvation. It was an issue of blasphemy, saying, I am God. I can save you. I can give you everything you need. And, and these Pharisees obviously did not like it. But the next thing, I, I think they might, might have taken even more uh, to, it says, the hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep, so when he sees a wolf coming, he abandons the sheep. Right here, Jesus is actually talking about the Pharisees being the hired hand, right? The, he, they're, they're the ones that are working in the church. They're, they're making their income from, from, from working in the church. They're, they're living off everybody else. And he's saying, 
they're going to abandon him if anything gets difficult. They're going to walk away. They're, if, if, if things get difficult, they can just walk away in the church because they don't necessarily need to. They, 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 they don't need to take the crap from anybody else, so they can just walk away. And, and the Pharisees are trying to think, man, he's taking our credibility away from us. He, he, he is basically defaming us right in front of everybody. So I'm not sure what they were more mad about, the blasphemy or the defamation, but, but it was something that was really difficult for the Pharisees to hear because he issued their, his authority. Now, what Jesus had to say throughout this passage is an amazing thing because he was talking about truth. He was talking about life. And when we understand truth and we understand life, we will have this abundant life, not just breathing air in and out, you know, not just having a pulse, but an actual life where, where, where it means more. A life where, where we have a purpose and, and, and a meaning for getting out of bed each day. It doesn't mean that we're just breathing air. There's something more to it, that we can have a full, abundant life. And, and he talks about this. He, he, he says, I'm going to lay down my life for the sheep, right? Here's a guy who, first of all, created everybody, and now he's willing to lay down his life for a sheep. He's protecting them. He's taking care. So the, the, the life can continue. So, so, so the wolf or, or the hired hand or the stranger can't come in and take, the, take their lives away. But he's going to protect them. He's going to take care of them. He's going to give them a full and abundant life. And he says, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. There's a relationship there. They, they actually hear him. They actually understand who he is. The next part, my sheep listen to my voice, right? It's something amazing because when you think about sheep, when, when, when you think about them knowing their owner, that they will follow their owner to, to do anything and everything, but they won't follow the others, the, the stranger's voice. They won't follow the person that, of, of voice that they don't know. When you know Jesus, you know his voice. When you know Jesus and you get into his word, you can tell and you know what is right living and, and, and the choices that you need to make. So it helps. It helps guide us and it gives us life and, and, and it gives us an even better life, right? These are the choices that we've been talking about all throughout this series. Now, it's pretty amazing, but maybe you have the same same idea. Like when I used to go play basketball, you know, I played high school basketball. I wasn't great. I wasn't horrible though. But when there were these times where I'd, I'd make a basket and net a three or whatever, and, and I'd hear my dad's voice in the crowd, right? I could pick my dad's voice over, over 500 other people, and I don't think it was because he was that much louder or or drowning out everybody, and he wasn't the only one cheering in, in the stands. It was because I knew my dad's voice. I could pick him out in a crowd. I don't know if you guys are the same way, but at least I was, and still am. Even in a party, I could hear my dad laugh, and I'm like, oh, man, that, that, that you know, like, you know, amongst the hundreds of people or whatever, and I could pick out my dad's voice. It's just like God, right? When, when, when you spend time with him, when you're spending time in his word, you know and understand God's voice. Matthew 18 is a story about a hundred sheep and, and a shepherd, and, and one of the sheep run away, disappears, and, and the shepherd doesn't know where it is. But he leaves the 99 because they, he knows that they will stay together. They will stay as a group. Not all the sheep are smart, but one left. Well, I, we don't know the reason he left. Maybe he got distracted. Maybe he saw a dandelion over there and try, tried to eat it and fought, fought, just kept on going. I, I don't know what it was, but he was lost. And, and, and a lot of people, 
think being a shepherd is, is one of the worst jobs and being a sheep might be one of the worst sheep that, that there is. But, but the, the sheep is worthy of being found. And, and, and the shepherd will go and do anything to find that sheep because that life is worthy. That life is worthy of being found. So he goes and he finds it and he brings it back with the herd because they, they need to be together. They need to be there, right? God is willing to say, this is what we need. This, you, you don't need to be alone. You need to be with a flock. You need to be together. You need to be with them, right? We're all looking for more. We're looking for a better life, right? When it's the words and God is right there in front of us. When we give up the life that we have and give it over to God, He will change it. He will give something new. He will give not just a better life, but the best life. We're always searching for something better or something newer or cleaner or whatever it might be. But when we give our lives over to God, that's when we will find real life, when we really understand what he has to offer, right? Because Christ not only gives life, but he actually gave us life, created us in the first place. And he knows what abundant life is because he actually defeated death after he died for us on the cross. That's why he did it. So people would come to him in relationship Right, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but except through me. Right? We have all tried to do life on our own. We, we've gone from one thing to the next to the next. And we can't do that anymore. And, and the people that, that, that have come to know Jesus have had to come to a place in their lives where they said, enough is enough. I can't do this anymore. I need to give it up because it's not working for me. This, what, my answers are not good enough. Man's answers are not good enough, right? Because man's answers, right, we all have answers for something. That doesn't make it truth. I've, I've been told all kinds of answers by people in my past, and I don't believe all of them. Some of them are right. Some of them are good, <laughs> But some of them are just making it up as they go along, right? And, 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 and when you look at the Word, something that has been there for 2,000 years, something that has stood the test of time, something that, that is sharper than a two-edged sword and will give life, is useful for, for correcting, useful for teaching, rebuking, and, and putting you on, on the right path. You, we can actually go to... Uh, life and, and know what life is because of what's written in these words. All we have to do is accept it, believe it, trust it, have faith in Him, confess our sins, and ask for forgiveness, and repent and turn from our ways. God loves you. He wants the best for you, and that's why he's offering life. I ask the worship team to please come forward, and as they do, I'm going to ask us to all close our eyes and think. Think, have I heard God's voice? Do I know God this morning? And if there are any people here today that is longing for something new, something better, something that God only has to offer, the best. There is something that is going on in our lives and our hearts and saying, God, I need to listen to you. You are the gate. Only through that gate can I be saved. Oh, oh, you are the good shepherd. You know the best. You will take care of the sheep. You will protect us from all harm. Maybe if you're in that place today, you can say, Pastor, it's time. I'm willing to give it up. And say, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to choose life over death. I want to trust God's voice 
over man's voice. I want to trust and submit to God over my own opinions. Maybe you could just raise your hand up and say, Pastor, I want it. I need it. I need it today. I'm going to invite God into my life today. Lord, we praise you. We glorify you today. And if this is something that's kind of burning in your heart, say, I want to talk to you later on. Please do. Praise you in your name. Amen.